Hello? Hello? Uh, hi, I'm Weishi. I work for uh, research at Coma. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, how we view driving with OpenPilot as a human-machine uh, cooperation problem and how we use machine learning to improve things. So this is how we drive uh, without OpenPilot as a human. Basically, the driver uh, is the only actor here. But with OpenPilot, the, the driver's role slightly changes, and uh, they will now work cohesively with OpenPilot, uh, with the driving models specifically, in some way. So today's talk will be uh, focusing on different aspects of the dynamics between the human and the driving model uh, shown in this graph. Um, so we will cover how we use the power of machine learning to uh, learn about the driver and then learn about the driving model and how we ship uh, many impactful improvements uh, along the way. Uh, as we know, uh, OpenPilot as a driving assistance system uh, requires the user to be able to take over at all times. Uh, in simple words, you need to pay attention. Uh, we already covered how driver monitoring works uh, in OpenPilot uh, from the last Comic-Con. A talk two years ago, so today we'll be focused on the progress we made since that time. So this is what the driver-facing camera looks like on the old Comma 2. Uh, it's a bit noisy, but uh, mostly uh, it only shows a limited view of the interior uh, for the driver uh, due to a very small view on the Comma 2. Uh, to make things worse, uh, due to the limited compute on the Comma 2, we had to crop the image and uh, feed it into the model. Uh, it's not fun to, do, to build a DM like, on inputs like this, trust me. Uh, for the model, it was like watching a movie like, with all the people standing in front of you, like blocking the wheel. That's basically how it felt like. Uh, moving to the comma three, this is the initial model we shipped using uh, the comma two data before we had any real uh, amount of comma three data to train on. Uh, and this is the new model we train on uh, the new comma free mo uh, data. Uh, and the model we ship currently uh, is shown. It's shown with the green box, uh, which basically covers the whole interior instead of just some part of the driver. Uh, now, as we can see, we can see the full body of the driver and hand and e even the steering wheel. Uh, and then the same is true for also the passenger. Uh, with that, uh, now we have achieved on the comma free almost 100% of uh, face detection rate. Uh, with that, we can remove the wheel touch uh, when the camera is not blocked and use vision only for DM. Uh, yeah, because it's, it's not the best idea to assume the driver is paying attention when they are t touching the wheel because that can easily be cheated like in a Tesla. Uh, so another thing we can do was to uh, remove the right-hand drive toggle with the model now can uh, now being able to de detect whether uh, which side the driver is driving on, uh, say you're in like the U.S., you're on the right in this image, uh, or you're on the other side if you're driving on the wrong side of the road. Um, so with that, we can remove the uh, right-hand drive toggle. Uh, one less toggle is always better, as Adib says. Uh, we'll come back to that uh, passenger thing a little bit later. Um, so in terms of uh, true positive, we have achieved a net gain of almost 2x in uh, true, uh, alert, true, positive, true positives by using a model, uh, bigger model box. And then now we, have, we also have the extra benefit of the extra contacts we have with the full interior camera. Um, with the extra contacts, we are able to build upon it to do this. So last time on my uh, Comic Con presentation, I mentioned that we will explore moving to a more end-to-end -end approach, a more end-to-end a -end approach uh, for DM. Uh, now I think it's a good. Now I think it's a good time to do that. So in a classic DM policy, we have the model that predicts some attributes of the driver, and then. Th those are fed into some state machine to determine whether the driver is distracted. But in an uh, end-to-end -end DM world, the model should be able to tell from the footage like whether the driver is paying attention or not directly. So here is an example of the, a deep driving, uh, as you can see. Other than uh, when he was looking right, 
uh, on the uh, at the row, or when he was like straight distracted by his phone. There's also a lot of gray areas there. Uh, as a human, even as a human, it's tough to tell like whether sometimes he's paying attention or not. So we need to define attention to be able to like have good ground truth for end-to-end -end DM to learn from. Uh, here's a hint. DM doesn't live in a vacuum. It's part of the system, a part of the open heart system. So what is attention really? So the answer, the answer really is quite simple. Uh, we already know that OpenPilot is a driving assistance system again. Uh, the driver should always be ready to take control. So with that in mind, uh, we are ready to get our ground truth. With that, with that in mind, it's simple that the paying attention definition should be whether the driver is ready to take control at any time. With that in mind, we're ready to get our ground truth for the end-to-end -end DM system. So uh, we make two, two simple assumptions. The first one is uh, the probability of taking control is higher when the driver is driving or taking control. That's pretty obvious. And the second one is uh, the probability of not, not taking control is higher when the car is at a standstill. So it turns out we already have those things in the, in the logs for a long time. Uh, therefore, you can just use them to train the model uh, to predict from the driver footage whether uh, the driver is ready to take control or not. Um, so with those uh, naive ground truth I just mentioned, we train a vanilla end-to-end -end model that predicts whether the driver is distracted from uh, some frames. And you can see that uh, it sometimes reliably det detects uh, when the driver is really distracted, like he was looking out the window. He was definitely not ready to take control here. But the, all, the model also thinks that he was not ready to take control here, which where he was just chill driving. And so it's this. He was looking at the row while turning the radio, which in a taking control context is fine. So we need to fix those false positives. So we, re we realized that the only way to fix all the ambiguity, which it's probably a, it's most likely a finite set, is to have the re a real human to label some of those difficult scene uh, cases. Uh, because of the fact that uh, we already have a helper model that's trained on vanilla DM uh, labels, we can use that model to find how us find all the interesting stuff, and then only. 2% of our entire data set ends up uh, needing to be uh, labeled. To get the perspective, we outsourced the labeling work to a third party, and it took them only one person in less than three days to do our labeling. We pay virtually nothing to uh, gain a lot of improvements in our ground truth. So with that improved ground truth and our end-to-end -end, uh, DM model training on that, uh, the model is now able to pick up additional subtle distractions like uh, using phone uh, without force triggering on chill driving poses, like in this example, uh, in, in this example so shown here. Uh, whenever the timer drops, it means the system thinks Adib is was distracted. So you can see this is fairly accurate because. Uh, the, when the timer drops is where AD was really not able to uh, be ready to take control. So uh, to put it in a number, with a number, um, we have metrics showing that the net result of adding end-to-end -end policy is to have a 15% gain in, false, in true positive with no false positive gain. So now let's uh, change our focus onto the driver uh, by looking at some behavioral metrics. Uh, remember in uh, full frame DM I mentioned earlier, we are now able to detect uh, from DM model if there's a passenger or not. So by overlaying that with the driving data, we came to the surprising conclusion that um, when 
when people drive alone compared to driving with a passenger, they are four times more likely to take a corner over half a G. And two and a half times more likely in uh, heartbreak, heartbreaking. And twice, uh, as like, tw twice more likely to uh, tailgate someone. Um, so that, all that uh, aggressive, all that aggressiveness difference in uh, driving from having a passenger or not inspires us to uh, do a whole driving style analysis on our fleet. We basically classify driving style using metrics like heart braking, uh, heart, heart acceleration, or like heart turning, etc. And then those things are used as a conditioner to uh, fit into the driving model. And as Harold mentioned, by using like the truest profile, we actually make uh, Taco Bell drive much easier by making it drive smoother. So another metrics that is super important to our company is that uh, we need to understand the relation between making driving chill and potentially making driving uh, more making drivers more prone to distractions. Uh, as always, we, we talk with numbers and we have metrics for exactly that. Um, so the first conclusion from our metrics is that uh, drivers generally pay more attention to the role when using Google Pilot than not using Google Pilot. Oh, so here, the green curve shows uh, the um, distribution of segments with different percentage of distracted times when engaged with Open Pilot in uh, green or not engage open pilot in red. So essentially, uh, the more left to the curve, the more left the curve, uh, the less distracted the drivers are. So we can see that uh, when engaged, uh, drivers are generally less distracted. Uh, that number actually is around 40%. So that's a big, big improvement. So actually, it's actually not too surprising to imagine these things because with Open Pilot, um, it first takes away the taxing stuff from driving and allows you to pay more attention, pay more attention to the surroundings, and also it, it's hard to not pay attention when like it yells at you when you get distracted. Um, the second one is actually more interesting. Uh, there's a common doubt that if you've been using Open Pilot for a long time, you start to lose attention and become complacent and in the long run. So, but our long run uh, metrics disagrees with that. Uh, this is an aggregate of the same bunch of drivers in the long term. Um, distraction trends, trends, and the lines remain pretty flat uh, for different percentiles of distraction durations. So we are confident that uh, the driver, our users don't get more distracted as time goes by. So now uh, with the driver out of the way, now let's tech, uh, talk a little about the driving model itself. So the model is an integral part of, the, of our human machine system. Uh, and it's crucial that we understand how the driver can interact with it and how it can uh, potentially interact back with the driver and make the experience more, more coherent. coherent. Uh, the human driver mostly interacts with the driving model by, disengage, by disengaging or overriding. Uh, those di disengagements give us a strong signals of when and uh, hopefully why uh, the model doesn't do well. And therefore, we've been putting a lot of effort uh, into building and looking into um, disengagement metrics. Uh, we've been tracking the longest time. Uh, own pilot can be engaged, which is, e uh, which is easily in the, in the hours. Uh, it's good to know Open Pilot works, but this kind of stuff all look like this, and uh, it can't really help us improve. It's like similar to someone uh, who learned driving on the highway only, and they can't really learn anything. So the question have been, we have been asking lately a lot is, uh, where do Open Pilot users tend to take over? And we build this. Uh, this is our automatic disengagement uh, reports. Um, 
So it's a tool that enables us to uh, do large scale up to date disengagement analysis. So it runs daily automatically and it's shown our, on our biggest TV in uh, research. Essentially, it gathers all the lateral and longitudinal override data, as well as the unexpected uh, disengagements. And, uh, and then with all the logs uh, parsed, we are able to uh, group, group all the disengagements by the, by the dis disagreements between the human and the model, uh, so that we can split them into different classes as shown here. And here are just some examples of different kinds of uh, disengagements. Uh, so basically, uh, we show a list of random example for each kind of disengagements on the reports. And then everything is visualized with uh, necessary data. Uh, like in the GIFs here, we can see uh, in this report, uh, the spin turn cutting. And we can like go to the turn cutting person in comma, which is one person, uh, and say uh, turn cutting team, which is one person, and say, oh, there's been a lot of cutting lately, uh, what's going on, and then uh, hopefully you can have it fixed. So here, ex uh, here is another example of how we uh, use this report to fix a uh, real complaint. So there's been, as people know, like there's a lot of uh, noise about um, people asking, oh, we need to adjust the following distance. Is following too far on the highway sometimes, like this Discord user, Johnson. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, we listen to that, and but we need to back that out with data. So we look at the disengagement reports, and we saw this. Hmm, there's like, uh, so you can see there's uh, more than 30% of our longitudinal disengagements is due to the model following too close or it's breaking too hard, too early for a lead car. So we know that this is a real problem. And then by like giving this to the, the right person, we were able to figure out not only this is a real problem, but also we know how much we need to fix this problem. So we come up with uh, the latest longitudinal personality toggle in our settings. Uh, so the last point I want to discuss is um, how the driving model can potentially give feedback back to the driver to communicate his uncertainty. So uh, first of all, how do we know if the, the model is uncertain uh, for some given C predictions for a given amount of seconds in the future uh, pretty well? So um, we can rely on the model itself to tell degrees of traffic at the traffic lights. Uh, which makes the model more uncertain. <laughs> and on the right side, we have like things where open I've seen where open pilot can would probably not work, like merging this UK narrow row or turning onto this busy street after a stop sign. So the first step uh, we can do is to show uncertainty in some kind of. Uh, confidence indicator in UI. This is uh, actually a work in progress we are, we're doing now. Uh, so remember that in uh, 094, we ship the always on border, which means it always communicates the engagement status. So we're thinking, oh, why not? We can use that and change that to something less green when the model is less confident. So that, so say in this example here, it's just like one lane row, it drives fine. But here, then like two seconds later, it sees this potential divergence and it becomes less confident and might, might need your attention. So it's nice to have that dynamic between the model and the driver. And also like say when the bird finally poops on your car, it probably becomes red. So um, yeah, that was my talk. Hey, uh, great talk. A um, couple of questions for you. Uh, what's your overall thought on this, the long-term 
uh, time and investment that's going to be spent with DM um, as we actually every day get closer and closer to level four, level five, where conceivably you don't care that if the driver's asleep or in the back seat completely. What, what's, what's your general thought on that, uh, how that's going to evolve? I mean, in the context of open pilot, we probably always we require the, the user to pay attention. But in terms of level four, level five, I would say the, there will be in the future some interplay between like how confident the model feels and how the DM policy should adapt. I think that's the final goal. Okay, that, that makes sense. So maybe certain times it might be needed, but other times it would be fine and may alert the user to, hey, we need you to probably pay attention now to yeah. be safer, but in general you're okay otherwise. Yeah, we already have some adaptive DM mm -hmm. policy uh, in place, so that might be a good place to start. Okay, and then just a quick question on um, the actual eye, like eye gaze and tracking on that. Yes. Um, I know with like uh, Tesla's, you can just put on sunglasses and it, it says, yeah, he's paying attention, even though your eyes can be completely closed. Mm. Um, does this system have anything with like eyewear or glasses that, you know, that it's not detecting eyes and does it assume that you're fine? I don't know if that's it's common knowledge of how that works or not. I think whenever your eyes are in invisible, it just falls back to a head pose. And uh, the end-to-end -end policy is actually really good that when you have some weird poses, other than, you know, just normal driving position, say you're sleeping when you're wearing sunglasses, it can probably pick that up and say, oh, there's an anomaly here. Great, I got a question here in the back. Hello, awesome talk. Uh, do you think that near a symbolic approach with some, something like um, propositional logic will be a viable solution for deeper understanding of actors in environment? Uh, sorry, can you repeat? Uh, do you think that uh, in future, a uh, near symbolic approach with uh, formal logic, dec declarative logic with uh, sub-symbolic uh, models will be viable to deeper understand the s uh, behavior of actors in the environment to predict future? I'm not sure about symbolic. Near symbolic. It's like uh, deep learning plus uh, dec declarative logic. Oh, I see. Uh, I mean, our end goal is to have end-to-end -end driving model that just looks at the scene and tells us where to drive and potentially like how confident it is about like doing this path. And I think in the future, as the driving model gets better, it should just be able to tell like naturally with our end-to-end -end approach. Does that make sense? I wonder if you could share a little bit about um, how you classify and what uh, breakdowns of data you get from classifying drivers as chill or not. It's okay. a fascinating topic for me. I, I, I've gotten old and I use OpenPilot a lot, so I mostly drive chill, but every once in a while I throw my car all, uh, on an autocross course and I use OpenPilot as a data logger. So is there a memory to that? Are you classifying per segment, per route, per device? And it's a uh, per, per route. as a uh, off the wall question, uh, how many open pilot users would you say are good drivers? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we classify them into uh, five categories basically. Um, but I don't think we track like specific dongle IDs. We more like focus on the route, I believe. Yeah. Got anything else, Wishing? That was a lengthy question. You satisfied with the answer, Jason? You kind of dodged the one where I asked how many open pilot users were good drivers. <laughs> it'll, it'll be opt in to share this with your insurance company. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a question upstairs. Uh, thank you. Uh, if if uh, if you come back to like uh, two slides, but in terms of like giving feedback uh, to the customer about uncertainties. Uh, Communicate, and uh, I'm thinking uh, if if it's possible at all. But uh, yeah, not exactly that. But wherever you had like um, uncertain uh, model being uncertain, uncertain about specific, and trying to communicate it back to the to the driver. Uh, not sorry. not this one, like uh, the the real like um, mock-up of the road. Like with a vehicle, like the picture. Like. 
few more slides. A uh, few more? Maybe like forward, not not, not back. Oh, no, the no. one with the driving behavior? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here? No, 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 no. There's one of the last ones, like... Uh, uh, Which one? The red and the yellow one. Oh, this one. Oh, no, 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 with, with the road, uh, like... With oh, the sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. So, uh, this one. Uh, no, no, for <laughs> more, more. <laughs> no, no, you're going to the right direction, but to, to, the, to the end of the presentation. The red and the yellow, the forward-looking statement. Oh, that, sorry. That's yeah, 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 this one. Uh, I'm thinking, uh, I don't know if it's possible at all, but it would be nice if, uh, if it could also communicate uh, some areas where it does not want to go, like, like for example, if there is like vehicle parked or like, you know, some blockage or whatever, so like, uh, like maybe in, like, I don't know, in the red. Uh, yeah, we can have a hard cutoff, like, ideally for like some sketchiness of the scene and say, oh, you should probably disengage here. And give you a super short timeout. Anyway. If that makes sense. Yeah, cool stuff. Thank yeah. you. All right, I'm coming over here. Hey, awesome talk. Um, you mentioned you make some assumptions to determine whether the driver is attentive. Yeah. Like, um, like if they're driving, they could be more attentive. If they're at a stop, maybe less attentive. So I was wondering, like, I assume these are neither conclusive nor do they always hold. So in the future, do you think it's possible to also use data from the driving model? Like maybe if someone's drifting out of the lane or if they stop more suddenly than the model was, do you think that can be used as a negative signal for the driver monitoring? Uh, do you mean when engaged or not? Um, I, I guess either way. Either way. Um, yeah, I think that stuff is a little bit more far away from like what we're looking for. Because in here, although those things might not seem immediately obvious, you can see in the data there's a distribution shift from, say, taking control or not, or like being standstill or not. And we picked up that signal and we capitalize on, on that to determine whether the driver is ready to take over. I think that's good enough with some refinement. Uh, oh, I have like a, kind of a far-fetched question, but uh, have you ever considered using driver monitoring to not just communicate like uncertainty between the model and the human, but uh, somehow have the human communicate intent uh, back to the driving model? For example, uh, during a lane change, yeah. um, if the human is looking in the rear view mirror, you could use that as a signal that the human wants to like is affirmative that it knows it can turn left. Yeah, but we cannot always assume that. Th oh. There will be a lot of false positives, so whichever way. All right, and we got time interesting for problem. one last question. Uh, do you measure the driver takeover or disengagement reaction time somehow? Uh, in, like when model is uh, uh, open pilot is driving for two hours and uh, do you see that uh, it affects driver's reaction time in case it, he needs to disengage? Uh, what's the question again? Uh, it, do you measure somehow the uh, driver's uh, reaction time? Uh, does it change? Uh, if the open belt has been driving for, for example, two or three hours without oh, disengagement. You mean the, the DM threshold, uh, timeouts, or the model confidence mm. slash disengagement? If, if there is an... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if oh, an that. Uh, we don't have metrics for that. But I think like the, the second long-term DM metric it's pretty conclusive about like people using OpenVala for a long time. Okay, thank you. All right, actually we got one, one more question. Someone over here have a question? We good? All right. 
Thank you so much, Wei Xing. Thank you.